Welcome back to your mat. Today we're going to play a little bit at the wall, which is one of my most favorite props ever, is to use the wall. And sometimes when you don't have other props like blocks, a bolster, blankets, or uh, meditation cushions, the only prop you might have is a wall. So if you're taking a class, I always like to set up in the corner of a studio in case your balance poses, and I'm always working on my balance, so I like to feel grounded by two walls. Uh, if you are teaching a class and you have students that might be struggling getting up, getting down from the floor, or finding their balance, it's great if you have enough wall space to set everybody up at the wall. So I'm just going to start with like my morning practice at the wall. Just a little quick something to get me warmed up before I have to go upstairs and make breakfast for my kids or get on with my day. So let's start in standing. And let's get grounded by standing next to the wall. So for balance poses in particular, you might not need to hold the wall to find your balance, but you might want to be next to a wall because that can help you feel really, really grounded. So for me, I like to stand with my feet about two fists width apart, which is about the width of a block, just, to, just in a place where I can get equal weight in both feet. That might be wider for you or that might be narrower. For you. So just pick what works in your body. Then I like to push down into my feet and push wide and then lengthen through the top of my head firming the center of my body, my core, because that's going to help protect my back and make me feel really grounded and powerful. So I'll start here and now I'm going to turn and face the wall and start with a little bit of cat-cow. So taking my feet out even wider, bending my knees, sticking my butt out, so I'm leaning forward, lifting with this part of my bottom, which is my gluteal fold, and taking a few cat cows standing. So what I'm doing is rounding the spine, looking down toward my feet, tucking my chin slightly for a cat pose, softening my belly, pulling my shoulders blades back, looking up toward the ceiling for a cow pose. And just starting to get warmed up. Good. Staying in bent knees, sticking my butt out. I'm going to bring my hands to the wall for chair pose. And then I'm going to do a little vinyasa at the wall. Standing up, walking my hands just along at my chest level, up on my fingertips, curling my shoulders back, pulling my belly in for cobra pose. Now I'm going to place my hands higher up on the wall, just above my shoulders, about two hand prints, and step back to downward facing dog. So down dog, I'm going to do all the things I would do on the floor. I'm going to push back through my heels. I'm pushing the wall away from me, rotating my upper arms in, and bring my chest toward the floor. So we're making the shape of down dog without having a lot of pressure in our hands. And really working our legs. So I'm pushing down and wide through my legs. Taking a deep breath in. Walk my feet in. Bring my hands behind my low back. Pressing down through my feet, pulling up my pelvic floor, I'm going to curl the shoulders open and look up. Do a little back bend here. Good. And release. Now I'm going to open the shoulders. Placing my hand at the wall and making my arm nice and long, I'm going to bring my hand about a handprint or two above my shoulder and turn away from the wall, pressing into my hands and opening the front of my shoulder. And just be careful not to overstretch or push too hard just to the point of where you feel first sensation or a stretch. And then let's do the other side. So you can see that my left hand's on a diagonal from my shoulder. I'm lifting through the side of my waist and just walking my body away from my hand, just gently, so I know where I can feel the stretch. Good. Coming back to the wall, this time I want you to grab a block. So I'm gonna grab one of my blocks just so that I have it handy next to me. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna grab two blocks. I think one is great, two is better. I'm just gonna have them on either side of my mat, just in case I need them. And I'll start with my morning flow, yoga at the wall morning flow. Curling my shoulders back, lifting my heart out, rooting through my feet. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, using the wall. Walk your feet back, and let's bend our knees and walk forward until we find our blocks for forward fold. Seeing as this is the first forward fold of the day, knees nice and bent, sticking out your butt here. So you're lifting with your gluteal fold, bringing your chest forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. I'm gonna bring my blocks to their lower setting 
and step back with my right foot, take my right knee to the floor, inhale, reach up, a little stretch for the hips. And then exhale, bringing my hands back to the blocks, I'm going to bring them back on their lowest setting. I'm going to send my left leg straight back behind me and bring my right arm out in front of me, use the wall for balance. So you can do this the other way, having your foot at the wall instead of your hand. Just gives you a little extra balance, pulling my belly in, breathing, placing my right hand on the block. I'm going to bring my left foot to the wall, stretch out my left leg right from my hip, reach my left arm up to the sky. So I'm just getting started for my day. Planting both hands either on the floor, I'm choosing to use blocks here, sending my left leg back behind me. I'm going to do four little push-ups. Not leading with my chin, leading with my chest. And only come down as far as you can push yourself back up. And then I'll come back to my tabletop position for a little bit of cat-cow. So it's just a little stretch in the morning. Just need a little bit of yoga in the morning. Good. And for me on my blocks with cat cow, my hands are spread out nice and wide. You have a couple of options either to wrap your hands around the top of the block if you find you have a lot of pain in your wrists, wrap your hands around the bottom of the block. It really encourages you to spread your fingertips out, which I really like, which helps to keep weight from dumping into your wrists. Now I'm going to take a downward facing dog. I'm going to bring my blocks out a little bit wider. I'm going to grip the top of the block. I like cork blocks here because they stay gripped to the floor. Curl your toes under, lift your hips back, looking back towards your hands. Now I'm going to walk my feet forward. A couple of options here. Because my arms are lengthened by the block, you may have space to walk up. But if you still feel like you're compressed in the center of your body, take your feet out wider, bend your knees, and walk up slowly. You can also walk your hands back. And let's stay in this wide forward fold here. I'm going to bleed my blocks to the center, bend my knees, lift my butt. And then on the inhale, reach all the way up. Right hand grabs a hold of left and crescent over to the right. Back through center, left hand grabs a hold of right and crescent over to the left. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands through heart center. I'm going to place my blocks right alongside my mat, and I'm going to do it again. Inhale, reach up, look up. Exhale, hands come behind the back, root down through your feet, pull your pelvic floor up, lift your chest. Exhale, both hands come to the wall. Let's do a downward facing dog. Hands are diagonal up to your wrist, or your hands are diagonal over your shoulders. Coming back into a down dog shape. This time, instead of stepping back into a lunge on the floor, I'm going to step forward to a lunge at the wall. So stepping right, right leg forward, and my left leg back, I'm going to grab a hold of the block and place the block right at my knee where my knee lines up with my ankle. Pushing into the block gives me a little bit more stability in this pose and keeps me from taking my toes, my knees past my uh, toes. Inhale, reach up. So I like the idea that I'm pushing forward with the block on the wall, pushing back with the heel, and then from here I'm going to take a twist. Left hand to the wall, right hand comes behind me. Good, and if you want to place your hand on your hip, your thigh, or reach your hand behind for a little bit more of a shoulder opener, you certainly can do that. Then placing my hand on the block, I'm going to push, place the block next to my outer right foot, and then I'm going to move my back foot to pivot and plant, for triangle pose. So I'm going to use both blocks here to stabilize me, moving my back foot a little bit wider, inhaling, reaching up into triangle pose. If you feel that you're going to be bending or hyperextending your knee here, sometimes you can just take the block, wedge it, if it's sticky enough, wedge it into the floor and into the knee, and that'll keep you from hyperextending your knee. Awesome. Okay, let's bring both blocks back to the floor, lift up onto the left toe, spin it around into your lunge pose. And then you may need a couple of steps to get forward. Just be careful and place your super close to the wall and step your feet together. Inhale, reach up. Left hand, right wrist, crescent over. Back through center, second side. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, sweep behind you. Lace the fingertips together, root down through your feet. Lift through the pelvic floor and through the chest. 
Exhale, release both hands up to the wall for your downward facing dog shape. And this time we'll add on, we'll add a little bit of a vinyasa plank here. So we'll come forward to cobra. So I'm gonna walk my feet in slightly, hands are at my chest, looking up into a back bend cobra pose. Exhale, come back to what I like to call half lift here. Sometimes it gets called down dog, but I think this is more of a half lift. Good, and walk your hands down to your blocks or to your mat, knees bent. And you can do another half lift here if you feel it. And fold. This time, we're gonna step that left foot forward, right foot back, point your hand to the wall, and this is where you can adjust your stance to place your block at your knee, so your knee is lining up with your ankle, or not coming past your toes, and then you can heel toe the back leg back for your lunge pose, and reach out. Good, and you have the option to stay here, or reach back. So let me do the other side, so let me step that right foot forward, left foot back. So I'm not doing the same side twice, but sometimes happens. So find your second side, Inhale and reach up. And again, you can either reach back, you can reach behind, you can keep your hand on the wall. Push out through that back heel, bend into the square of that knee. Good. Breathe. Let's bring the block. I'm gonna switch legs again. I'm gonna bring the block to the outside of my left foot. Pivot and plant my right foot. Straighten out through my left foot. Inhale, reach up. That's the one thing about practicing first thing in the morning, I tend to forget my right and left. If you feel like this knee is going to hyperextend, I just like to bring the block behind my calf, push the block into the floor, and keep my, keeps my knee nice and soft here for triangle pose. Good, exhale, release, bringing your blocks toward the center of your mat. Let's pivot our both sets of toes toward the long edge of the mat, and get them into a nice forward fold. Now I tend to have a very curvy or lordotic lower back, a very curvy spine. And so what ends up happening is it's always kind of overstretching. Um, and it's really nice for me to stretch it in the opposite way. So it's really curving this way. I like to curve it the other way so that I get a little bit of a stretch in my back and my legs lifting my sit bones, pushing out through my feet. And I like to place my hands on my blocks. You can even come up higher if you like. Come down lower if you want. Use no blocks if you like. Sometimes I just like to stack the blocks where I can rest my head. Walk my hands behind me, but it's really personal preference as to what you want to do or how deep you want to go. So it's really, really up to you, right? I'm just playing here with different ways that we can Play with the blocks. Good. Perfect. And then when you're ready, let's bend into the left knee. I'm going to take the blocks, pivot around. So turning my uh, left toes to the top of my mat, I'm going to flatten out my blocks and press back to downward facing dog. Lower the knees down and then come into a child's pose. So that is pretty much my morning practice. When I'm in a bit of a hurry, when I just want to get a little bit of movement going, when I get out of bed and actually feel a little bit stiff. So because I have a very curvy spine, laying on the floor, laying in bed for, you know, six or eight hours, I sometimes wake up with a sore back. So I just like to do a little bit of heart opening, a little bit of back bending, just to get that spine lubricated so I feel good going on with my day. So you're welcome to stay in your child's pose for as long as you find it comfortable and interesting. You can also come back into meditation if you like, or you can come back to laying on your back. So that's just a little morning practice that I like to do at the wall, just quickly in the morning, get things moving. I hope that you found this uh, helpful or interesting, and I would invite you to just explore what you can do at the wall. There's lots of fun things that can be done, including bridge pose. There's also all kinds of fun things like handstand. So the wall can be your favorite or your best prop. And the great thing about it is it doesn't cost a thing. Thanks for being here, everyone. Hey, if you're with me here on YouTube, Thank you so much for being here. Please like, subscribe, and share. And make sure you ring the notification bell so you know when I load up my next video. Thanks, everybody. Have yourself a fantastic day. Namaste.